Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Church. This is the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm proud to say our homilist and presider today is Father Phil Judge. I'm Carol. I'm the lector for today's Mass. And if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to silence any electronic devices you might have so they won't sound during Mass. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of their Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My name is Phil Judge, and I'm the new Jesuit president over at McQueen, and it's a real pleasure to be back. This is not my first time in Rochester, but my third, as well as my third time here at Our Lady of Lourdes. Back in the 80s, I was a scholastic and would come here on Sundays. When I was principal in 2000, I took my turn in the parish rotation. And it's a really lovely parish, and I've grown to love it very much over the years, and it's really good to be back. So, thank you. And to the few of us, the crowd of us, who are here at 1030 this morning, we celebrate this 23rd Sunday of our church year. And our readings speak to us of something very contemporary, I think, about the difficulty of conversation and how hard it is to correct one another. And knowing that we have avoided difficult conversations and that we do have trouble correcting others. Let's ask the Lord to open our hearts and our minds that we might receive his forgiveness and his strength. Lord Jesus, you came among us calling us to receive of God's grace and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life and life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt. But you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please recite the words to the song. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. 
the word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother or sister sins against you, go and tell them their fault between you and them alone. If they listen to you, you have won over your brother or your sister. If they do not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they refuse to listen to them, tell the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, then treat them as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, amen, I say to you again, if two or th three on earth agree on about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in, the, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. When I first began reflecting on these readings, I was reminded of a comic sort of quip, can we talk here? And I realized that actually we can't talk here. And in fact, we haven't been able to talk for some time now. It's not like there's nothing to talk about. We've been living under a pandemic for six months. We have a very contentious election coming up in a few weeks. And we have racial violence rearing its head kind of pandemically around our country. And yet we can't talk. There are no conversations about these things. Every time we try, we start with anger, and then we get weary, and then we sit there and say to ourselves, is it even worth it? So we don't talk, and we stay silent. And I think that's a problem, and it highlights something that's interesting in our society, but also is contrasted strongly in our scriptures. We can't have those conversations because we start from a place of political rhetoric, a political dialogue, which assumes from the beginning that there are two sides and people have to be on one side or the other side. But our readings suggest to us today that that's not Christian rhetoric. Paul reminds the church in Rome that the one law is that we love one another as we love ourselves. And he goes on to say that every other law is covered in that one. Love our neighbors as ourselves. How hard that is. How hard it is to love ourselves, let alone to love our neighbors like ourselves. But in the world of Christian rhetoric, that doesn't allow us to say, well, those selves are over there, and they're different from these selves over here. No, I have to love them all equally, like myself. The high calling. But Christian rhetoric is not political rhetoric. And then the readings go on to tell us, well, if we're going to have conversations out of that love, then what do they look like? 
And the first reading from Ezekiel reminds us that God appointed watchmen, and watchmen have to first speak the truth. That if they don't speak the truth in all charity, and people do dumb things because of that, yes, the people who do dumb things will be punished, but so will the watchmen who should have known better. So truth is a first standard of how we speak to those we love. And then with the gospel, Matthew has Jesus sort of interpret for his community. Well, how does this work out when we don't agree with each other? After all, there are all kinds of people here and we don't always agree. So Matthew points out through Jesus, well, first take your brother aside by yourself and reason with him. If that doesn't work, then come back with two or three other people and talk to them more and see if you can establish the facts and work it out. And if that doesn't work, we'll bring them to the whole community and see if the whole community in dialogue can come to some resolution. And only then, if that doesn't work, then you can treat them like a tax collector or a sinner or a Gentile. Unfortunately, the world of political rhetoric says we start at that last step. You are a tax collector, a sinner, a Gentile. And always miss those first steps dialoguing with one another, of bringing in a group to extend the dialogue, of bringing in an even larger group to listen. That's where our Christian rhetoric differs from the rhetoric of politics. I don't mean to be simplistic or to make it sound like it's easy. It's not like we're going to leave here and suddenly overturn the world's political rhetoric. There's still going to be a lot of yelling in the next months. But I do think we should take comfort in the fact that we're right to be bothered by that. Because that is not the world of Christian rhetoric that is our world. That's not the world of loving our neighbor as ourselves. That's not the world of having loving conversations based on that love of neighbor. I may not do that all the time, and all of us may fail at that from time to time. But that is our model, and that is our goal. So, our readings remind us today that we really don't share that rhetoric of the world, that rhetoric of politics. We're called to share the rhetoric of Christ, the rhetoric of Christianity, to love and to listen and to walk with in companionship. So let's resolve to do that wherever we can have conversation, among small groups, family, and friends. But let's also pray for that. Pray for that for our world and for our community. These will be long weeks ahead. Maybe Christian rhetoric can provide some of the answer for how we talk to one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And yes, there are two creeds, we just said both of them. <clears throat> the Lord invites us to bring our prayers always to him, because in his love for us, he invites us to share that love with all those in need in our world. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, May we be God's instruments 
to help build a society of justice, mercy, and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greater Rochester community, may we be open to the Holy Spirit as we seek understanding and healing of the racial divisions among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and teachers who are returning <coughs> to school this week, especially the students, faculty, and staff at Seton Catholic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathering with family and friends this Labor Day weekend, May we all follow the measures to avoid COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially Kathy Pernicelli, may we know God's healing for their spirits and their bodies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Our Lady of Lords, St. Anne, for whom our prayers are requested, and for all who have died, especially Flora Salento and Daniel Pruda, may they share in Christ's victory over death and rejoice in God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers in our intention books and those concerns in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, your Son came among us to show us the path of love. The path of love even in the midst of opposition and even in the midst of violence. Hear the prayers and needs we bring before you this day, those things greatly in need of your love in our world. If it be for your glory, we ask you to hear and answer us, through Christ our Lord.
sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works, through Christ, who is our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, remember me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of our Lord, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Saviors to men, formed by divine teaching, they dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
And in peace, let's continue to pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have no announcements beyond saying have a lovely day and enjoy this beautiful weather on this Labor Day weekend. And there is one other announcement. Sorry, I lied. Yeah. So thanks for your patience for uh, parking in the street today. The lot was paved last Tuesday, I believe. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our thanksgiving is complete. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.